someone once told me, your food should tell you where you are, when you are, and Chez Panisse really embodies that. Chez is an institution. A lot of people know Chez Panisse and think of Chez Panisse when they think of the farmer's table movement. Sue in French means subordinate, but I think the work of a sous chef is very important. It's a very big piece of the puzzle that helps bridge that gap between the head chef and the prep team. So as a sous chef, I'll teach interns and new cooks all of our techniques that I've been taught. It's not just us, it's 50 years of Chez Panisse. Good morning, I'm Ann Cromley, sous chef here at Chez Panisse. Come on inside and we'll start cooking. About 7.30 now, I've got to go iron my chef whites, like every day, and get to meeting. Let's go. I usually pull my chef whites from my locker, 77. I've got a few different little menus from over the years, inspiration for the day. An iron coat is a professional coat. If we look nice, we're respecting the surroundings. You know, we work in such a beautiful kitchen with beautiful produce. It's part of kind of the whole atmosphere of Shea. All right, my coat's ironed. I'm gonna put this on and head to the kitchen for our meeting. During our prep meeting, we'll go over the whole menu. Each prep cook will select or be assigned a dish that they'll finish to completion for the line cooks to then serve during dinner service starting at five o'clock. The prep team has a meeting with the chef every day at 8 a.m. Our menu does change daily based on the season, so we're really at the whim of what the farmers have on any given day. As the sous chef, I'm the main note taker for the prep team, and I'll post them up for the whole team to reference throughout the morning and throughout the day. Instead of fettuccine, we're gonna do casa reche, just because the egg shortage that's kind of happening all over the place. So we'll do our eggless pasta extruded with fioretto cauliflower, saffron walnuts, marjoram, and ricotta salata. So the chef works tirelessly all week managing this menu, making any adjustments based on availability, things that we couldn't find, like eggs. We're having a hard time finding eggs like everybody else. So let's look at the cauliflower to see how we should cut it. Hopefully we can use a good part of the beautiful tender stems. Let's taste it to make sure that we're avoiding anything that's too fibrous. Then I thought we could lightly blanch it and then they'll saute it to order to get a little bit of color. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to our main prep kitchen. Everyone in the prep team who attends the meeting is given a menu for the day and two printouts of all the list of ingredients that we'll be working on throughout the day. We have our first courses from the salad station and wood oven on this side. And then we'll be working mostly from this page for the entrees. We usually do one dish each. Sometimes as a sous chef, I'll take on two dishes. I'm gonna do the braised lamb today with red flint polenta, broccoli, and then olive salsa verde. I'm also gonna make a citrus ver blanc. It's gonna go on the petrali sole. I'm gonna pull out my knives. Everyone's favorite knife of mine is this little guy <laughs> because it's so cute. I feel garlic with this a lot, but I love it. Starting the lamb braise, that's gonna be our first item of business. All of our cooking projects really aim to get done by lunchtime. We always start our braises with fresh herbs, thyme, parsley stems. If we pick parsley for the leaves, we'll save the stems for stalks, sauces, braises, and that just helps to combat food waste. Next we'll add our mirepoix. So we've browned up onion, celery, and carrot. The interns come at seven. They help with a lot of important tasks because we want to get this into the oven as soon as possible. Lots of garlic used at Shea. We use the peels on the garlics. The aromatics in the braise are all gonna be strained away. So we're just trying to get the flavor in there. Peels are fine. Saves a lot of time too. This is a little bit of reduced red wine. This will give a nice tang and acidity and beautiful color. Next, I'll add a little bit of lamb and chicken stock we make here. There are Chez Panisse cookbooks, but in the kitchen, we don't really follow specific recipes. We kind of work with the ingredients and the vegetables and the meat to tell us what to do. So this is actually just canned tomato that we've pureed. That's gonna give it a little bit of body that we want. And then I'll add a lamb. You can always add more liquid, but I don't want it to be too, too liquidy. So I'll add the lamb first and then go from there. This is the lamb shoulder from Full Belly Farm. An hour and a half away, juicy and tender. We will add about halfway up the meat with liquid, cover it, put it in a hot oven. We're gonna wait till the liquid part simmers, starts bubbling a little bit. You'll vent it, turn the oven down, and braise it nice and slow 
uncovering and flipping as we go, and I'll show you all those parts. All right, let's head out to the produce walk-in and grab some broccoli for our dish. Fish order just arrived, so crabs today on the menu. We have a few walk-ins throughout the restaurant. This one is outside, so we get our steps in pretty easily. You have to show how strong we all are. We lift all day long. I mean, this must be like at least 25 pounds. So the next item on our dish is our broccoli. We're just gonna do a simple blanch. Bigger, I'm gonna try to make them all kind of the same size so that they blanch evenly and so they sit on the place nicely together. This is gonna add up to a lot of waste from here. So we do compost, we have two composts. Why would we just throw it away, you know? It can become broccoli again. So it can regenerate the earth. So part of my role as the sous chef is making sure everyone is feeling good about their prep list on time. You know, we're all watching the clock and making sure each of our ingredients are being prepped in a timely manner and getting on or off the stove within our limit, which is about 11.45 we'll start cleaning up. Next on my prep list, I am going to finish up this lamb. All right, we've got it to our simmer stage. The meat is beginning at this stage to loosen away from the bone, becoming more tender. So I'm gonna flip the lamb probably about six times, 15 minutes at a time. Every time I'm at, the, at this station, I am looking at everything on the stove. I know what's on the menu, I know who's working on each dish in case I need to jump in anywhere or just give a simple reminder or a question. We all have our eyes pretty much on everything, but it is 100% part of my job to make sure everything is running according to plan. It is under season, so I'm gonna add a little bit of salt for this next batch. It has a nice little al dente crunch. The line cooks are gonna saute the uh, broccoli with garlic on the line, so I wanna leave a little bit of room for them to cook it a little bit longer. It really is the best produce. We don't do a lot to any of it, really. If you start with the best ingredient, you're gonna get the best product. We have nothing to hide, and we want more so the opposite, is to show off the beautiful produce that we get to work with. All right, one final, hopefully, check of the braise. Oh yeah, we're very strong. Got a lot of tough ladies in the kitchen for sure. And it's kind of always been like that, which is a really exciting thing for me as a female chef. The strong female leadership at Chez Panisse since the very beginning. And having an amazing team of female line cooks, prep cooks, pastry chefs, Alice leading the whole shebang. When all the braces are done, you can just check that amount sure. to see if you bring the oil and okay. add it. Thanks for your support. So I am testing. It should come out very easily. There's a little bit of resistance there. That means it's not quite done. Some parts, you know, thinner meats, that's coming out nice and easy. That's still a little tight. So I'm gonna pop it back in. We have one last project, cleaning up some fresh chanterelle mushrooms. Sometimes we take care of projects we have lots of hands for that we can get done in a short amount of time. Projects that would otherwise take a little bit longer solo. Where are these foraged from? These are from Canyon, maybe 30, 40 minutes away. So we'll take off the outer kind of tough layer on the neck or the body, and then we'll rinse them in water, swish them around, but being very careful not to damage them. We have a potato and black truffle pizza with chanterelle mushrooms. Our lamb is done in the oven after flipping for a few hours. It's just about falling off the bone. I like to kind of test it. If this bone comes out nice and clean, the shoulder blade, then I know it's just about there. We want it to remain in a nice chunk when we portion it up. We don't want it to be like a shreddy type of like carnitas braise. I'm tasting for a nice balance of the tomato, the red wine, not too much salt. I didn't season the liquid, remember? It just came from the seasoning from the lamb. So it's tasty. You kind of want to be able to want to eat a bowl of that, and I do. Next, I'm gonna strain the solids from the jus. To make a heartier braise, you could puree or food mill this mix, we're gonna keep this nice and light. Now it's time to take it off the bone. It's been done for a while, so it's nice and cool. Hands-on is the way to go. Can't do it any way else. Kind of try to find the bone and work with it, you know, along the bone. You don't want to rip the meat because you want to be able to portion it. So like that nice chunk, that was really great to keep together. Now I can portion that as I please. I'm trying to do this gracefully for you. Look at that, amazing. I'm gonna get rid of these bones. It is. 10.30, so I usually clean up about 11.45. Mm. 
I'm just gonna pop in the walk-in. The braise is done, so that means I get to cross it off our list. It's about 11 o'clock. We have about 40 minutes before we have to clean up. So I'm gonna start our butter sauce, our beurre blanc. First thing we need is shallot. Grabbing shallots for the beurre blanc. I have too large of a pan to take them back in. <laughs> but we'll be, need about two cups uh, finely diced shallots. Ooh, it's cold. Okay, a beurre blanc is a French butter sauce with a base of shallots. And today, working with the seasons, we'll make a citrus beurre blanc with citrus zest and juice in the final product. The citrus beurre blanc will be served with local petrale sole, fennel, roasted potatoes, carrots, and spinach. We'll finish it with a few citrus slices and send it out. To get these shallots nice and thin, I work at the horizontal, right on down to the end where the root is, and then make tiny little cuts on the vertical and then go back down. I started as a prep cook and a position labeled at that time pasta lettuce. So I would make the pasta and wash the lettuce for the day. And then I moved up to prep. Once you move on from prep, you'll work on the line upstairs, salad station, wood oven, grill, and saute. And from there, I've worked all the stations and then hopped down into my role now, which is sous chef of the cafe. The shallots are gonna go in, gonna add a little bit of wine. The wine will brighten up the sauce. We'll reduce this on the stove till it's just about gone. Be nice and sweet. We'll add a little bit of citrus zest and juice at the end. It's gonna take the outer zest from the orange. You don't want to get too far into the pith of the bitter part. Right before service, I'll mount butter. Once that's all mounted in, we'll finish it on the line with citrus juice because we want it to be as fresh as it can be. We want that flavor to taste like we just put it in. So we got all of our big projects done. It's 11.40, it's time to clean up. We'll start gathering anything that's left on the boards here. We'll pick up the mats, take out the compost. It's kind of a whirlwind type of time. Everyone knows what to do, so we kind of just get at it. We'll break for lunch at noon, and then we get to relax for half an hour. It's 12.30 now. Time to begin our non-cooking projects and our butchery. This is Juliette, one of our line cooks. She's in the prep kitchen with us today and we're gonna be butchering some fish for our service. So we have Petrali Sole from Fort Bragg. We're aiming for a five ounce portion. I have a nice, light, flexible knife for fish butchery. The Petrali Sole comes in fillets, so you wanna trim off the end here if it's a little bit scraggly. And then there's just a little triangle of bones right in the middle that we're just gonna trim out. Sometimes we'll make a fish stock or we'll ask the downstairs cooks if they want to use it, uh, buoy base. We're looking for four and a half to five ounces and it's 4.72. So that is gonna be a go. This is just gonna be one portion and we're just gonna roll it up into a little rosette. So we usually aim for a one or two per portion of fish. How it came butchered from the fish market is not always perfect, so we're trying to take away any blemishes like that. All the prep cooks do bring their own knives to work. As we grow older in the kitchen and progress, we learn more about what styles of knives and become more into really making that our own. Yeah, he says the sharp is next. He steals it from her. It's important to have sharp knives. I mean, it honestly makes a world of difference. Remember to trim off the end though too. You know, any like bloodline that still exists, yeah, just take that all off. There's so much attention to detail, there has to be. Yeah, like I said, we're doing very simple things that aren't hidden by much. So they need to be perfect when they're hitting the line. The attention to detail to the food, the attention to detail to the lighting and the copper and the shining, everything. You know, we need to make it feel like someone's walking into someone else's home for dinner. The pressure comes from me because I really respect and I really understand and I really care for the history that we're all a part of. All right, Juliet's got the fish portioning under control. I'm gonna start my olive salsa verde to go on the lamb, back up in the prep kitchen. So it's just about two o'clock. I'm gonna do some of the finishing touches on our lamb braised dish. So that means I'll finish the olive salsa. We're using lots of fresh thyme, parsley, and then olives. The line upstairs will have, add shallots and red wine vinegar. Part of the prep task for this dish is to pit the olives. Our intern Remy did that today for me, so that was very kind of him. The olives are imported from France. These ones often come in brine. Sometimes they're a little highly seasoned. I soak them like a caper 
to take some of the uh, salinity out of them and now they're perfect. You know, you can't get the same level of precision or just care that you can with your hands if you use a machine. We mostly use our hands for every job that we do. It's very near and dear to my heart. Just the connection between the farmer, the chef, our knives, you know, every part that makes it to dinner service. I've only ever worked in one other kitchen other than Shay, so you know, a lot of the people behind me have taught me much of my knife skills. So I'm gonna add some rough chopped capers. They come packed in salt to preserve them. So we have to have a bunch of forward thinking to rinse and soak them. It takes a couple hours to get them to the right salinity for our salsa. In the kitchen, chefs and cooks have a higher tolerance for salt just because we use more during our daily cooking. You know, we're cooking in large batch volumes. If it's salty for us, it's gonna be probably too salty for the customer. The word tapenade derives from the French word for caper. So there has to be capers and tapenade. For this olive salsa, not necessarily true, but we like the way they taste and they give a nice rustic feel to it. So you notice I chopped them a little more rough than the olives. So I want them to be present. So these are Spanish anchovies. So I'm adding anchovy because it will add a nice richness kind of another depth of flavor. I'm just gonna add a few so that it doesn't overpower the lamb. I'm gonna add some pounded garlic, which I've pounded in the mortar and pestle. Now we'll add our herbs, parsley and thyme. The last ingredient will be olive oil. So I'm using a nice finishing oil called Corsini, and it's an Italian olive oil. We use mostly Italian oils at Shea. Using the freshest of the fresh is really what we're going for, and you can really, really taste it. Nothing, nothing tastes like Shea. I love it. So I'll give that the final approval to send up to the line. So it's 2.20 now. I'm gonna gather the mise en place for the line cook, so we'll be here in about 10 minutes. I'm gonna load it up on the dumbwaiter right back behind me. As a sous chef, around two o'clock, it is my job to load up the dumbwaiter. It's easier for me than the line cooks to kind of ruffle through and search for the ingredients that they're looking for. More efficient if I do. People go crazy about this thing. It's a good workout, morning, noon, and night. <laughs> All right, let's go upstairs. So it's about three o'clock. I'll check in with the line cooks who've gathered their mise en place that I sent up on the dummy, the dumb waiter. Dummy for short. I'll check in, make sure they found everything, make sure they don't have any missing pieces to their mise en place. This is a salad station. All the first courses and the soup will come off of here during service. Our salads are one of the best things to begin your meal. You know, they're so fresh. Lots of the lettuces came in yesterday. Some of the ingredients we cooked, especially for this, they're always a bright, fresh beginning to the meal. Spencer, do you have everything you need? Yes, the lettuces are washed. Next is the saute station. The petrali sole dish and the pasta will come from this station. Raj is on tonight. Do you feel good about all your prep? Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> You're welcome. The saute station is kind of considered the leader of the line. They'll take in all the tickets for the hot food. The salad station has their own ticket machine. They deal with all of their own tickets. Raja, the saute cook, will organize and call the fires for the rest of the night, communicate with the front of house, and make sure that everything is coming out in a timely manner. Plates are looking nice and kind of just gives the finishing check mark. Two more. Josh and Kayla on grill. The lamb braise will come from this station and the chicken. Do you feel good about your prep? Yeah, we're putting it all together. Fantastic. The wood oven is responsible for two pizzas and a wood oven appetizer. Today it's a duck riette crouton. Hiromi's working the wood oven today. How's it going? Good, good. The wood oven's a very fun station. It's a hot station. They feel good in the winter time, but in the summertime, by the end of the shift, it's totally, you just need a shower. Everyone feels great on the line. This is kind of my final pass before tasters. Right now, the prep team has done all that we can do. So next up for the line cooks, Tasters at four o'clock. Mira's finishing up the Beurre Blanc. Sometimes at the end of the day, I'm running all over the place and I have to delegate fairly quickly different tasks. So I started the Beurre Blanc, but any one of our prep cooks can easily finish it. We're mounting in four pounds of butter for two cups of shallots and two bottles of white wine. It's gonna be spooned right on top of the sole. It's gonna be so good.
At Tasters, the chef will come up and taste each dish on the menu that we've prepared, give their nod of approval, make a little change if they need to, pass it on to the front of house. My job is done. All right, it's 4.30, tasters are done, chef approves of everything. My job ends here, now that everything has passed its test. I hope you got a glimpse into what it's like to eat and cook seasonally with us here at Chez Panisse. I hope you take that into the kitchen with you. Go meet your local farmers and get to know them. Am I tired? I don't get tired. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs>